Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, New Life Church, Albany, Georgia. I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. We're going to look at the Bible as a guide to life. And, you know, there's so many people that, and I'm finding it more and more in the day and age we live in, that the Bible is just either A, how to get me saved, B, promises for my life, and that's about it. Instead of the great 2 Timothy 3, 17 paradigm, that the man of God may be truly furnished unto all good works, that it is a guide to how you were supposed to think, how we're supposed to act, how we're supposed to live our lives. But it's a dangerous thing to say, well, I'm just going to be led of the Holy Ghost. Well, that's good. But God does speak through his word. I mean, Jesus was the Holy Ghost incarnate, and he's still quoting the Bible, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God at Satan when Satan attacked him. So we have to use scripture as a guide of life. And so in Psalm 119, 89, it says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So this is God's kind of life. This is a heavenly life. And so, uh, you know, prayer closet, fasting. And so I think a lack of having the Bible as a guide to life is really hindering even Pentecostals and apostolics. Um, in Psalm 119, 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It tells us the way to go. In verse 1 of that great word of God Psalm, it says this, 160, I mean, 176 verses, you know, all with the word of God in it. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of God. The Lord, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. And so scripture is meant to be a guide of life. And I want to encourage everybody to live according to the Bible. You know, a few years ago, a guy wrote a book about one year living according to scripture. Now, he was not rightly dividing the word of truth. He was trying to live by some Old Testament ordinances and stuff. I appreciated the premise of the book, kind of almost like a secular guy saying, let's see how we can live by the Bible and in this type thing. But as Christians, we have to say, okay, you know, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of a good report, any virtue, any praise, let me think on these things, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be pleasing in thy sight, you know, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Uh, the wisdom that come up from above is first of all pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of good fruits, you know, and the wisdom that comes from above, it, it, uh, below, it tells you, I mean, you're going to have to give an account for every idle word that you speak. And so all kinds, of, I mean, it tells you how to dress, how to look, how to act. And, you know, 1 Timothy 2, 1 Peter 3, all throughout. And so the Bible is meant to be a guide to life. Solomon wrote it like this in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. The key I want to point out here is that verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And all the way. I mean, the Bible says, love not sleep, you know, a little slumber, a little sleep, a little folding of the hands. You know, it tells you don't go by this how the evil communication corrupts good manners. So the principles, even for the 21st century, are found in Scripture. The 21st century and technology didn't take God by surprise. So live, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He'll raise you up in due season. Live according to the principles of Scripture. Let the Bible be a guide to life because it will guide you like in Pilgrim's Progress. It'll guide you to the holy heavenly city. That's the will of God for all of us. I pray you get it. God bless you in Jesus' name.